Hallo zusammen! As you can probably tell by my voice, it sounds a bit strained, a bit low. It sounds a bit lower than usual and there's a good enough reason for that, because I went to this year's Rock am Ring festival with lots of cool people. So this vlog shows a few snippets of the bands we saw live on day one, along with my impressions and thoughts on their performances. You can also find two more vlogs for all bands on days two and respectively day three. So let's go! Compared to last year's vlogs I filmed at Rock am Ring, I didn't film much at the campsite this time around since we basically wanted to relax there and just had a very good time with new people aka great camping neighbors we've met there. So if you want to find out more about the festival itself, how it's structured and where it takes place, I suggest watching those vlogs. Anyway, this was my second time being at a music festival in general and I had bought the tickets immediately after Rock am Ring 2018 was over, pretty much as soon as they were available. Just like last time, I went to Rock am Ring 2019 with my good friends Vuko aka Get Germanized and Jan aka Haki. We camped at a different camping area this time around, which was much fun as well and also way more relaxed in terms of raising our tent. That's because Vuko bought a really, really awesome and easy to build up stable tent for these purposes. Unfortunately, we were forced to take down our tent the first time we had found a spot, because we were basically camping 2 or 3 meters within a different camping area without knowing that. Well, shit happens, I guess. Anyway, at our actual campsite, we directly got in touch with our really friendly and likable camping neighbors and hung out with them for the remainder of the day. Then on Friday, June 7th, the first actual festival day started. In the early afternoon, we walked to the festival site in order to see the first bands live and here are my impressions for all these bands we saw on day one. All in all, we managed to watch 5 bands in a row in front of the same stage, which is the main big stage in this case, the Volcano stage. Here around 9000 people fit into area A, which is right in front of the stage and then comes area B with 12000 people at a max and while well, pretty much a lot more fit into area C, it's almost indefinite if you will. On this specific day, we managed to get access to area A and stay there for the rest of the festival day. And by the way, you can find links to songs by all bands I've mentioned in the video description too. Unfortunately, the sound quality of a couple of my snippets isn't the very best, but I guess that's the price I was easily willing to pay for standing very close to the stage. So before we actually watched the first full performance we came for, we got a glimpse of the last two songs by Dead Land Ritual, which is a band I wasn't really familiar with at all. Now that I've looked them up, apparently they are a pretty new supergroup consisting of really famous musicians. For instance, Steve Stevens of Billy Idol's band on guitar, Black Sabbath's Geezer Butler on bass, drummer Matt Sorum of Guns N' Roses and Apocalyptica vocalist Frankie Perez. After them and the usual Umbaupause, die Umbaupause Singular, die Umbaupausen Plural, the intermission for the next band, we were looking forward to seeing Hailstorm live. Now I could be wrong, but I don't think my friends really knew too much about them beforehand and I instinctively didn't listen to too many songs by them beforehand either. I knew a bit about them before, for instance that front woman Lizzie Hill has a hell of a powerful voice and that my good friend Enos names them as one of their favorite bands. As you can see, it was a bit rainy here, but to be honest, I don't really care when I'm at a festival. Most of the time the weather was okay or even good, but we also had a few little rainy periods in between. Oh well. And what can I say, this definitely was one of the most powerful and impressive performances, not only but especially vocal wise here. I mean, you know, sometimes you don't see how much power a singer puts into their performance, but with Lizzie Hale you totally see how much she and her bandmates love what they do. And on top of the high energy level, the songs have great hooks without sounding too catchy all at once. 
Definitely one of my personal highlights regarding bands I didn't know too much about yet. And if you ask me, I definitely say they deserve a bigger audience. The mix itself was pretty good, but here and there the bass actually dropped the vocals a little bit. Then again, I'm aware that getting a good balanced live mix, especially at an open air festival, can be really tough most of the time, so great performance nonetheless. The same is true for the next band, Alice in Chains. Again, while I'm already familiar with their discography, I guess my friends only knew vaguely about them. I personally really enjoyed the show, since I love the songs, but I know that a few guys around me in front of the stage didn't really like their performance too much and found them a bit too lackluster, if that makes sense. And you know what, while I love Alice in Chains, I see why they got this impression. Since they don't really offer anything special or especially eye-catching visually in comparison, well, that might make them look rather bored or even tired, even if they aren't. Then again, singer William Duval really interacted with the audience and we even got a pedal pit, which I think looks hilarious. This is really geil. Awesome. And yeah, those are the things that I love about festivals. Now to the next band, Slash featuring Miles Kennedy from Alterbridge and The Conspirators. I have seen Alterbridge live twice before and I love them a lot, so I knew what to expect vocal-wise. Honestly, I consider Miles Kennedy one of the most versatile vocalists in modern rock and metal, and I love the more classic rock and roll approach to rock music he's playing with Slash and his band. On top of that, this band is loaded with charismatic people, whether it's Slash himself, or Miles Kennedy, or for instance bassist Todd Kearns, who sang Slash's tune Dr. Alibi in honor of Lemmy from Motorhead. As you can see here, drummer Brand Fitz actually has something we'd call der Windschutz, the windscreen, standing in front of his cymbals, which was a good decision sound-wise. Before this gig, Rock am Ring founder and longtime CEO Mr. Marek Lieberberg came on stage, greeted us and told us about a potential upcoming heavy wind section for the next hour which in the end was relatively harmless, so luckily no gig had to be postponed or stopped. One of my favorite tunes in this set was the Guns N' Roses tune Night Rain, which really allowed for the band to shine and to showcase everything they have to offer quality-wise. For instance, the high-pitched chorus vocals by Miles Kennedy just fit perfectly as a powerful contrast to the roaring guitars.
Next up, one of the biggest surprises for me personally, the Smashing Pumpkins. Well, gotta be honest with you, except for Ava Adore and maybe one or two other songs I had listened to, well, once or twice, I didn't know anything by them. Also because I was a bit undecided or uncertain myself if I actually like Billy Corgan's vocals or not. I know it sounds strange to say that, and it, well, actually is, I guess, but something still prevented me from listening more to them prior to this gig. However, already after their first song, I was totally convinced that I really need to listen to more of their stuff. You can't really compare them to Slash and his band for instance, which makes for a really cool mix of different bands, sounds and styles, just the way it should be at a festival. So placing a more atmospheric sounding act like the Smashing Pumpkins after Slash was a very clever decision, I think. Apart from Billy Corgan himself, especially drummer Jimmy Chamberlain stood out to me with his extremely tight and fitting drumming while not overplaying things. I was familiar with his name before, also since he's considered one of the best studio and live drummers in that business to date. So yeah, feel free to recommend specific TSP songs I should check out. If you've seen a couple of my live streams or even this video right here, you will probably know that Tool is one of my all-time favorite bands, really. After having seen A Perfect Circle live at last year's Rock am Ring, I was already really really happy to have had the opportunity to hear Maynard live, well, in any constellation pretty much. Little did I know back then that Tool would be one of the four headliners at Rock am Ring 2019 because this was only announced later that year, I think around October or so. And now that I had already listened to the two new tracks Descending and Invincible, which premiered in early May 2019, and I'm aware of the official record release date, which is August 30th, I was even more psyched than already before. And with a band like Tool, I don't think I need to say anything other than perfect, except for one or two minor technical difficulties and little mistakes by Adam Jones here and there, but that's really zu vernachlässigen, negligible, as we Germans would say. However, I wanna point out how massively impressed I was by Maynard's vocal delivery. Man, honestly, he really, really gave his everything, also regarding his screams, for instance in Intolerance, which really sounded extremely powerful and tight. So much respect for that and for everything else to the band, and kudos for having played Germany again for the first time in about 10 years, I think. I mean, this wasn't their only new Germany show, but still. I love that Rock am Ring hasn't forgotten about Tool and even offered them the headliner spot that they deserve.